Well, we're looking at the uh, worksheet three, the energy problems. So we're going to go through some of these. So let's look at the first one. Got a cup of coffee, 140 grams, cools from 75 degrees down to uh, room temperature 20. How much energy does it release to the surroundings? This is not a phase change, so we can use the formula. Q equals the mass times the heat capacity times delta T. So we want to know how much energy, so we don't know what Q is. So we know there's 140 grams, and I'm not going to put the units in here because the uh, the units will work out at the end. If we need to see them, we can do that. And we're looking for the heat capacity of liquid water. So that is 2 point, or heat capacity of liquid water is 4.18. And that's joules per gram degree Celsius. And we have a temperature change, 75 down to 20, so it's a ch temperature change of 55 degrees. So it's a straight multiplication, and if we do the math there, we come out and we got 32,186 joules. So there's our first problem there. All right, so let's look at the next one here. So on the next problem, let's see if I get a little more room here. There we go. Oh, we got volleyball practice, and we lost two pounds of water while we were sweating. And if all this water evaporated, how much energy did the water absorb from your body? Well, right away, we've got to change uh, two pounds of water. we got to change to grams. If you remember back freshman year, the old uh, 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 factor label dimensional analysis. So this is where it comes into play again. So we've got two pounds of water, so 2.0 LB of water. And I always like to put things over one. And we do have a conversion factor. We know that they're in one kilogram is 2.2 .2 pounds. And we want to get that to grams. And we know in one kilogram there are 1,000 grams. If you remember, if it's the units start canceling out. The unit that's in the numerator is the one that we want. We've got the correct answer. And so as we uh, do the multiplication there, we'll come up with 909 grams. Well, from there, we want to uh, go through and uh, we're looking at a, uh, really we're looking at a phase change there because we're looking at uh, liquid water going to the gas phase because it evaporated. So we're going to use the formula Q equals MH and we're going to use the heat of vaporization. So we know Q equals 909 grams. So we put that in there and the heat of vaporization for water is pretty high. It's 200, it's 2260 uh, joules per gram, so 2260, and with straight multiplication here, and we got 2,054,320 joules. There's our answer there. All right, so let's look at problem number three. Suppose that during the icy hot lab, 65 kg joules of energy were transferred to 450 grams of water at 20 degrees, what would have been the final temperature? Alright, so here we're not doing a phase change. We're uh, taking water and uh, putting some uh, energy into it, and we want to know the final temperature. So we have Q goes the mass times specific heat, and we have a change of temperature. Well, we have 65 kilojoules, and we need to convert that 65 kilojoules over 1, and we need to convert that to joules. Well, pretty straight conversion here. We know 1 kilojoule is 1,000 joules, and so that gives us 65,000 joules. 
Oh, we can plug this in. So 65,000 joules. We know we have 450 grams. And again, I'm not putting the units in here. Okay, and we have the heat capacity of liquid water. We are not changing the phase. So that's 4.18. So we have that in there. And we got to solve for delta T. Well, if we do the math, so delta T equals 35 degrees Celsius. Well, we want to know the final temperature. So we're putting energy in, so that's going to be additional temperature change. So we started at 20. We had 20 degrees Celsius. Our temperature change is 35 degrees Celsius. So what's the final temperature? And that is 55 degrees Celsius. So that's what we have for that one. All right, let's look at problem number four. Now there's five. Let me get down to four here. There we go. So we're looking at problem number four. The heat capacity of solid iron is 0.447, much, 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 much lower. If the same quantity of energy as in uh, problem number three were transferred to 450 grams of a chunk, of iron at 20 degrees, what would be the final temperature? All right, so we can uh, we got the same amount of energy, so we know Q equals M C delta T. Well, we using the same amount of energy as before, so that's 65,000 joules. So we'll put that in there. Our mass is 450 grams of iron. And again, I'm not putting all the units in here. We know C is given to us. It's 0.447 joules per gram degree Celsius. So 0.447. And we're solving for delta T. Well, if we go ahead and do the math, multiply these two. Take this answer and take this answer and divide it into 6,500. We find delta T equals 320 degrees Celsius. Well, that's the change. We started at 20 degrees Celsius. We went up, we added 320 degrees Celsius. So the final temperature is 340 degrees Celsius. And again, a, a really big change because iron does not take nearly the amount of energy that water does. All right, let's look at problem number five. So we got a bag full of ice, 450 grams uh, at zero. Sits on the counter, begins to melt. How much energy must be absorbed by the ice if two thirds of it is melted? Well, this is a phase change. That's a phase change. And for this one, we really, we're melting it so it's the heat of fusion. So we can go Q equals the mass times the heat of fusion. Now, the only kicker here is that we're only using two thirds of the ice. So we have 450 grams and we're only using two thirds or 0.66. So that equals about 300 grams of the ice is being melted. So we know Q, so we go Q equals 300. We know the heat of fusion is 334 joules per gram. And again, if we do the math, we come out with 100,200 joules. And again, I'm not putting all the units in, but if you want to put the units in, they, they will work out on there. All right, let's look at problem number six. Got some Cheez-Its, releases 130 kilocalories when digested by your body. If the same amount were transferred to 2.5 kilograms of water at 27 degrees Celsius, what would the final temperature be? Well, we've got to do some conversions here. We got some things we can't work with. So we got 130, 130 kilocalories and we can't work with kilocalories. 
So I'll put that over one, but they do give us conversion. They're telling us one kilocalorie is 4.18 kilojoules. So kilocalories are gone. And we know one kilojoule is 1,000 joules. Kilojoules are gone. So that leaves us with 543,400 joules. So we have that. Now the other thing we got, we got 2.5 kilograms of water. Well, we got to work with grams. So we know 2.5 kilograms over one. And we know there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. And so that ends up being 2,500 grams. Well, it looks like we got joules and grams, so we can, uh, we can definitely do the problem here. And let's see, the same amount transferred uh, water, what the final temperature be, there is no phase change. So Q equals MC delta T. So we have our formula there. We have Q we've got right there, 543, 400 joules. We have 2,500 grams, so we have that, and we know when we look at we're looking at water there. We can find the uh, the C the, of uh, liquid water is 4.18, so we got the heat capacity of that is 4.18 specific heat 0.18. And we don't know delta T. Well, if we go ahead and do the math, we'll find delta T equals 52 degrees Celsius. We started at 27. And it's going to release some energy. So what will the final temperature be? We started at 27 degrees Celsius. We had a change of 52 degrees Celsius. So that's going to be 79 degrees Celsius. So we have that one. The last problem on this section, problem number seven. We've got the same quantity of energy or transfer to 2.5 kilo, kilograms of water at the boiling point. What fraction would be vaporized? Well, right away we know that's going to be a phase change. So we have a phase change. So we know Q equals mass times H sub V, which is the heat of vaporization. So we got the same quantity of energy. So we've got that from up there. 543, 400. The mass, 2.5 kilograms. Uh, oh, excuse me, we've got an energy transfer to that's boiling point. What fraction of the water would be vaporized? Well, we know the mass. We want to really find the mass on this one because we want to know what fraction of the water would be vaporized. So we know we've got this much, but we don't know how much is vaporized. So we're going to say mass because we don't know how much is vaporized, and we know that the uh, heat of vaporization is 2260 joules per gram. So now we can solve for M, and that's going to give us the amount that's actually vaporized. So M is going to equal about 40 grams. Or excuse me, 240 grams. My math is backwards. About 240 grams. So this much is vaporized. We have this much, 2.5 kilograms. Well, we need to change that to grams. One kilogram is a thousand grams. And again, I know this is a little redundant, but zero, zero grams. So this is the amount 
that the energy went into and this is the amount that was actually vaporized. So we can do really pretty simple here, 240 grams divided by 2500 grams and we can find a percentage and that's I think we can see it's a little bit less than 10, it's about 9% is actually vaporized. All right, so there are the first uh, problems here for worksheet number three.